What factors do you consider when you want to take a holiday? Welcome to Chest World YouTube channel where we live, learn, adventure and charity. We talk about finance, travel, personal development and community service. If you're interested in this kind of content, kindly subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you. Hello good people. In today's video, we are going to look at actually how much it will cost you to travel to Mombasa, stay and come back to Nairobi. We are going to work with three days and we are going to use estimate figures. So you need to always confirm when you want to book. The costs are also based on per person per day. The first thing to consider is transport because obviously you have to move from your point of uh, residence to your destination. But we will not dwell much on the transport because we already gave a detailed costing of the transport in a previous video. I will link it down below. But in a nutshell, you can spend as low as 1000 for transport and maybe over 20000 for transport. So it's your choice and your financial capacity. The next major factor is accommodation. Obviously, you can't leave your house to go to a destination where you don't have somewhere to sleep if you're staying for a few days. In this case, we are going to use an estimate of three days. So what are your accommodation op options? One, you can stay in a hotel. Of course, the hotel has its merits and demerits. And from maybe experience of many people, perhaps a hotel is the most ideal because everything is catered for. And if you have opted to just stay in the hotel, then it means you'll have everything in-house. You have full board, you have every activity indoors, which saves you a lot of costs and you get to rest then remember the activities in the hotels are limited so you may not be able to explore much this is an ideal situation when you just want to go away for a holiday to just rest and not have any activities when it comes to costing it can range between 1500 which is approximately $15 to anything over $35,000, that is $350 and more. Again, it depends on your financial capacity, but some of these cheap hotels have sub substandard service, so you may consider other factors before you settle on a, a hotel. If it was up to me, I would give the hotel as my number one priority because everything is catered for and all you need to do is show up but the other options you can also have everything catered for but in a different perspective and obviously comes at an extra cost the second accommodation option is airbnb which can range between a thousand and thirty five thousand and anything over that there's no limit, there's no maximum, anyone can charge according to their preference. So, the good thing about Airbnb is that if you're a group and you're sharing the cost, it's going to be very convenient for you. But if you're just a few people taking up big space, then it is going to be expensive for you. But Airbnb gives you the option of having your own meals just the way you like it, having your own space, and perhaps feeling like you're still at home away from home. I would obviously consider Airbnb as my second option. The next accommodation option is backpack. I'm going to discuss this together with the hostel that we had talked about earlier. 
this might be the second most cheapest or cost effective option considering that maybe with just 500 you can get accommodation which is equivalent to five dollars the first thing about this option is that you must have left your privacy at your house because either you'll be sleeping on someone's couch or another extra bedroom or you will be sleeping in a dormitory but you know what you get to save a lot and enjoy because you just need somewhere to sleep for a few days it's not like you're moving to your destination if you manage to save on accommodation food and transport then you'll be able to enjoy all the other activities final accommodation option we are going to talk about today is free accommodation at your friends relative or just someone hosting you at your destination this is the most cost effective because perhaps you may not uh, just walk in without maybe a bit of shopping or give some cash to your host but it will end up being the most cost effective the cheapest option that you can get do you know someone who lives in a destination you have been desiring to go perhaps this is your time to consider this option and maybe they would be more than willing to host you comment down below if you can host a friend or a relative or you would prefer this option the next major expense is meals which is also one of the easiest to manage depending on your finances you can opt to have the full three meals per day or even more you can decide to have two you can decide to have one heavy meal and maybe a light meal in the course of the day if you're on a holiday on a very tight budget i have tried this option i used to do mostly one meal or no actually two i would do a heavy breakfast and then i would eat at around five because you know what the rest of the day you are out having your adventures so what time will you have to just sit down and eat your meal the only challenge with this option is that it will not work if you have kids remember you still have an option at the hotel to take a full board half board a la carte or just bed and breakfast if you have too many activities scheduled then half board is a better option but if you are not mostly leaving the hotel that is if you choose the hotel option the full board especially with kids is just perfect because every time maybe they come back from their activities from swimming then they will be able to get a bite at any time anyhow and you will not have any concerns about meals of course if you're being hosted by a friend or a relative then this cost may not be there perhaps maybe when you're outdoors having your activities again you can wait to eat in the evening if you're really on a very tight budget and of course again you don't have kids kids cannot hold when it comes to meal plans um maybe the full board option which comes with a buffet could be a better option as compared to a la carte because you see a la carte will be charged as per your take and when it comes to the buffet you can have as much as you want other option when it comes to food is the street food you'll find some places um, the the street food is readily available and it is fairly clean and because it is eaten on a daily basis more people tend to enjoy the meal you can actually get fresh food from the streets the only part is the dust because most of the food is not covered but well uh, maybe you can look at that option the next thing is unless you're going for a holiday to just relax you may need to have some activities 
which come at a cost. Check through before you travel which activities that are within your budget. I will not dwell much on the activities once again because in our previous Mombasa vlog video, we highlighted some of the activities that you can do. But remember, you just need to check through your destination what is of course mix the free items and maybe the the free activities and maybe some activities you pay for to sum up this video we can always holiday depending on your budget if you have ten thousand you can holiday and even if you have less you can still holiday what you need to focus on is what option favors you thank you so much for watching this far if you're new kindly subscribe if you are a returning subscriber or my premier gang thank you so much for your continued support we value you and your feedback